Even in the most beautiful coastal resorts around the world, a tourist's paradise can quickly turn into a nightmare. In Acapulco, Mexico, the drug traffickers' ring of terror has driven the tourists out from this once popular destination. On the other hand, Pattaya, Thailand, attracts an increasing number of tourists every year through its unique and flourishing sex industry. On one side of the planet, authorities in Acapulco are trying to regain foreigners' trust. On the other side, in Pattaya, they're trying to stamp out crime linked to the influx of tourists. Two cities, two very different realities, both with the same mission. A mission entrusted to specialized tourist police patrols. Immersion in the lesser known spots of two unique coastal destinations. Welcome to Acapulco, Mexico. Beach is as far as the eye can see, luxury beachfront hotels, a tourist paradise. But this rosy image is hiding a dark reality. Acapulco has the second highest murder rate in the world. On average, three people are killed each day. Here, being a police officer means risking your life every single day. Cartels ring supreme in this city. Violence scores settling and bloody battles for control of the drug market have made foreign tourists flee this destination. Acapulco is now a dangerous city. Beaches and hotels are under high surveillance 24-7. But Acapulco has decided to combat the violence. This mission has been entrusted to a very special unit under Commander Inez's authority. The tourist police are on the warpath, prepared to face whatever comes their way. They constantly patrol Acapulco's beaches, an invariable sight amongst the few holiday makers. The tourist police cover the main points of the Bay of Santa Lucia. We cover approximately 30 kilometers of beach. Over recent years, the outlook of tourism in Acapulco has drastically changed. There are vacancy signs in all the hotels. Businesses are struggling. The city is so dangerous that foreign visitors have been scared off. But not the locals. Despite everything, Mexican tourists continue to visit the beaches, reassured by the presence of the officers tasked with keeping them safe. The tourist police unit was created to meet the need for greater security, to protect properties, tourists, and everyone who visits Acapulco. We currently have 110 tourist police officers and 83 tourist helpers. But Commander Inez's teams don't just patrol the beaches. Speedboats patrol 30 kilometers of the coast around the city. Acapulco is a hub, and drugs flow in and out through its coast. The city has to be protected on all fronts. There are many hidden bays along the coast, the perfect spots for trafficking. Commander Ines's men keep an eye out for any suspicious signs. The police here carry automatic rifles and patrol the sandy beaches without attracting the public's attention. In Acapulco, scenes like this have become the norm, and the deterrent is working. I can tell there's a difference because I came here four years ago. Now I'm back in Acapulco, and it's not the same. Even in the metropolitan area over there, there are problems. But at least here in the tourist area, I can see a difference. It's great. We're pleased. Tourists have the support of the city. We have to get Acapulco back on its feet. Today, the quiet beaches reassures Commander Inez. Everything looks normal. But experience has taught him that the storm 
often follows a calm. He never lets his guard down. Just like Acapulco, Pattaya was born out of tourism. But here, the tourism industry is booming. Pattaya welcomes over 4 million visitors each year. The small town has hardly 100,000 inhabitants. The low cost of living and no holds bar nightlife attract tourists from all over the world. But in the red light districts, alcohol related violence is becoming an increasingly frequent occurrence. The Thai authorities decided to put an end to the success. The bars are kicking out. The tourist police guard roadblocks on the city's busiest roads. Captain Plotprong is running the operation. He doesn't joke around when it comes to security. Tonight, he's leaving nothing to chance. We're going to run checks as usual. Shady looking cars and people who are completely wasted, drunk, dead drunk. We want to know what's going on. Most of the cars checked by Captain Plotprong's officers are driven by foreign tourists. So, to uphold the law, Thai authorities decided to call on police officers from around the world. Dimitri from France. Come here, Dimitri. He's a volunteer French police officer who helps us out. It's volunteer work. He doesn't get paid anything. We can thank him for that. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks to you. Great. Very nice. French, English, Mandarin. The police in Pattaya can make any tourist understand them. In France, I was a fireman. I was a fireman in France for 19 years. I came here on vacation 15 years ago. I love this country, like everyone does. So I came here and I decided to help. I knew police officers who said to me, well, why don't you give us a hand? Like with the checkpoints. We have to, here, foreigners are called farangs. So if we have to deal with a foreigner, a farang, it's likely that I'll take care of him. It's getting late in Pattaya. Now's the time that things start to degenerate. <laughs> A car failed to stop at the checkpoint and fled at top speed. The officers take up pursuit on two wheels. This car could cause an accident at any moment. The car has been stopped. Inside, two Japanese tourists. The officers quickly get them out of the vehicle. The two Japanese tourists will have to take a breathalyzer test. In Thailand, they don't joke around with drink driving. If the test is positive, these tourists will end their night in prison. You have to understand that someone's killed here every day, whether on a moped or in a car. That's why the police don't mess around. Sir, you're going to the police station. Sir, look, look at me. Okay? Or go to the police station. Okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Why? No work, no work. No work, no work. Although their alcohol level is only slightly over the limit, their night has been brought to an early end. Sir, you, you go police station. What? What? What is this? 
zero six seven. Uh, and mm. and you go mm. in a jail. In a jail. You have to understand, I don't know about Quebec, but in France, the limit is 0.5. Here it's the same, it's 0.5. In fact, we're under the Napoleonic Code. Now, if you're caught carrying more than one gram, that's one month in prison. You have to understand that. They don't joke around. Unfortunately, everything's cheap here, so people make the most of it. People generally go out really late in Pattaya. They go out around 11 p.m. and stay out until 2 or 3 a.m. So people sit around on the beach and sometimes that can lead to fights. Others get kicked out of bars and nightclubs. This is a place where police work is hard. But in truth, Thailand is not a violent country because this country, ex Siam, has old traditions that preserve the image of the land of smiles. Despite the severity of their justice system, the police are also there to help. When a bus full of tourists breaks down, officers are the first on the scene to provide help. Unlike Pattaya, Acapulco's economy is far from booming. In the 1950s, the golden age, Acapulco was the place to be for Hollywood A-listers. Up until the early 2000s, Acapulco was still considered a welcoming tourist destination. Every year, over 30,000 American students travel to Acapulco to celebrate spring break. But a rise in criminality drastically changed this city and young Americans have long left it behind. At the police HQ, officers are on full alert. A robbery has just been reported. Tourists and municipal officers are sent to the scene of the crime. Police cars speed through the city. Commander Ines' team happens to be close to the robbery. They are first on the scene. There's been a burglary. We got the call on the radio. We were already here in the Gran Has de Mosimba neighborhood. His men secure the perimeter while he interrogates the shocked employee. The distinctive information she provides helps officers to identify the culprit, a repeat offender well known by the police force. He's thin, tall, with dark circles under his eyes. These are the distinctive features that she noted. Robberies like this are an increasing occurrence in Acapulco, the result of growing poverty and an economy in free fall. This is a low-intensity conflict. The burglar didn't use a gun or a knife, nothing like that. He just threatened her verbally. Luckily, this time, there were no firearms used. But here, in Acapulco, even the smallest robbery can soon escalate and result in injuries or even deaths. Tourists are scared to come to Acapulco. 800 businesses have closed in the last year alone. The authorities decided to react by coming down hard on criminal networks in particular through Operation Guerrero, named after the state. <laughs> Commander-in-Chief Sunduk leads rapid response forces all over the city. <laughs> Okay. 
His strategy is to show traffickers and other criminals that they will never catch a break. Heavily armed men patrol the beaches, the busy neighborhoods, and the main roads around the bay. We're trying to bring peace back to this country. We have strategies to reduce crime. We're trying to lower the crime rate. But the operation's success also depends on information from the public. For Commander Sunduk, it's crucial to the operation. We need whistleblowing. Without it, we wouldn't get any results. People wouldn't trust us. With public sources, we can reclaim the peace and calm needed for Acapulco to become what it once was again, an international destination, a jewel in the crown. To reclaim its title of national tourist capital, Acapulco is pulling out all the stops. In addition to the tourist police, federal and municipal police are tasked with maintaining safety and security in this city. A city home to over 700,000 people, Acapulco is under high surveillance. Despite the efforts, drug cartels continue to strike. Not a day goes by without gunfire, and more often than not, people are gunned down right in the middle of the street. More than a thousand murders are reported each year. Scores are settled in the middle of the day, in the throngs of a resigned crowd. In the Gulf of Thailand, Pattaya shines under the neon lights that attract thousands of night owls. The police search anyone they suspect of possessing drugs or firearms. There are no restrictions. Foreigners are highly targeted, but the local population isn't given a free pass. People wander around. Some of them are drug users or they're carrying drugs or firearms. Sometimes certain things happen on the sly. That's generally the case with foreign tourists. We're under strict instructions from the highest authorities to inspect all suspicious looking vehicles and ensure that there's nothing illegal in them. The police officers have just spotted a group of youngsters they suspect are under the effects of drugs. They will have to submit to an on-the-spot urine test. We're checking for amphetamines. We check to see if they're taking drugs. That's why we're doing urine testing at the same time. The Thai police have mobile clinics set up around strategic points in the city. Each suspect must provide a urine sample. Depending on the result of the test, they might have to spend the night in prison. If their attitude is okay, and if they're not over the legal limit, we let them live normally in Pattaya, without any serious consequences. Cannabis consumption is widespread in Thailand and is generally tolerated in public. But dealing or possessing narcotics, such as heroin, could earn you the death penalty. Occasionally you may find something, but it's not a, what I would call a big problem. And foreigners certainly don't want to get mix, mixed up in any of that. If you say that the, uh, the laws on drugs here are very strong, very strict, and you find yourself in, uh, in the big monkey house in Bangkok, not a place you want to stay. The busiest area in Pattaya, Walking Street. A street completely dedicated to prostitution, where adjoining bars each have hundreds of girls on offer, enough to attract tourists from all over the world. That's quite good. Half hour, 59 bucks. You meet a lot of interesting people from all over the world, different countries, different cultures. It's a big melting pot here. But foreign tourists under the effect of alcohol or drugs can turn violent.
Richard Lovegrove knows how to spot them. The English police officer is also part of a volunteer contingent who enforced the law on Walking Street. The thing is, when you have a lot of people coming here on holiday, it's mainly tourists in this street. So people don't know the culture, they don't know the laws, and sometimes you can get that, that friction. So what we see our role is mainly is to be a cushion between the two, to help with translation, uh, to help explain, explain the rules and regulations to people. Pattaya hasn't always been an open-air brothel. Until the 1970s, it was a small fishing village. The town went through a phenomenal boom during the Vietnam War, when American soldiers on leave adopted it as their base. Pattaya has been the mecca of prostitution ever since. Here, really, the amount of trouble we get is quite small. But uh, if, it, if something happens within a bar, usually the girls in the bar will try and sort the situation at that level. And quite often, you can imagine, you're having an argument with somebody, and six girls come up to you and say, please stop. You're probably going to stop, aren't you? But it does happen from time to time, and that's what we deal with. So we come in and try and sort the situation out. Hopefully, we can sort it out there and then rather than having to arrest people and take them down to police station. This is the tourist police. Uh, this is their main headquarters, their mobile unit. They have the van here, translators, and uh, we also have uh, the lieutenant, the Thai lieutenant. They have uh, foreign volunteers, and they also have Thai volunteers as well. So there is a certain number of Thai officers within that. Easy way to tell the Thai officers, they're the ones with the guns. Most of the volunteers, like myself, we just do it for, well, some people for something to do. But for most of us, it's purely because it's nice to actually help people. We do it for free. We do it just because it's nice to give something back to the community. Oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, um, you're wearing a gold necklace, I see. Uh, might be an idea for you to leave that in your hotel room. What is that? You understand, you, you see here, you have the gold. No, no, sir, sir, I'm a police officer. Oh, what happened? Police, no, I'm scared somebody's going to take your gold from you. OK? Maybe better you put it in your pocket. OK. OK, sir, have a nice time. Language barriers. <laughs> Hello, sexy, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. You're good, OK. This is one of the world-famous lady boys from Katoys R Us. Uh, just to let you know, Katoy actually means ladyboy in Thai. So, uh, actually, if you want to, should we take a look? Just down there, yeah? Yeah. OK. You want to shake us? OK. They're very peculiar to Thailand, I would say. It's a very Thai thing. And, and there's no uh, shame or problem with it uh, as regards uh, within the families. You know, if somebody decides, wakes up one day and says, I'm going to be a ladyboy, I'm going to go and have some silicon breasts put on and grow my hair and wear high heels, nobody has a problem with it. It's a completely different scene in Acapulco. In the middle of the night, the beaches are empty. The police officers are now concentrating their efforts in the busy areas of the city. The residents are the biggest victims of growing crime in the capital of the state of Guerrero. The roads are practically deserted, a staggering difference from the daytime traffic. Sir, you're driving through stop signs. But it's 1 a.m. Yes, but you still have to stop. You don't know what shape the pedestrians are in. It's 1 a.m. No, you have to follow the traffic lights. That's what we're asking you. OK, I'll pay attention. Wait your turn. On the green light, please. OK? Yeah. Thank you. When I joined the police force, there were a lot of foreign tourists in Acapulco. 
There are all sorts of foreigners hanging around here, dancing. Now it's more of a ghost town. Like he often does, Juan Servin Casadero is patrolling the sleepy city streets. With years of experience as a patrol officer, he knows the city's every nook and cranny. I've been on the force for 21 years. You know, we spend most of our lives at work. 21 years of sleepless nights. Despite the apparent calm, the patrol officer is on high alert in this neighborhood, one of the most dangerous in the city. Juan hopes that one day he will feel as safe as he did as a child on these streets. At the time, Acapulco had an excellent reputation. Now it's a city where gunfire could break out on every street corner. There are conflict zones, like the outlying areas. But the tourist area is a normal area, a shared area. Still, there can be incidents here, like everywhere else in the country. When we're out on patrol, we have to know what's going on 360 degrees around us. We have to be alert, permanently, because we never know when something might happen. And in a fraction of a second, our life could be in danger, or a citizen's life. I'm proud to be an officer. It's always the same routine. I leave the house, I say goodbye to my children, and I put my trust in God. I ask him to bring me back home in the same state I left so I can see my family again. As the officer gets back on the road, the station initiates a priority call. Suspects have been spotted in a vehicle. According to the witnesses, they are armed. Juan races to the scene. They were spotted around these streets from Cali 13 to 18. The problem is that this vehicle has been seen on five different streets. 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. Five different streets. Several patrol cars are out looking for this vehicle and the armed suspect. We're all concerned they might do something bad. It's a Ford Focus. We turn off the lights to be safer. Because we're high up, they can see us and shoot. When we turn out the lights, they can't spot us. We coordinate a response like this to increase our safety. Guns drawn, the officers search vehicles, questioning the occupants and passersby. A wasted effort, the suspects have disappeared into the maze of dimly lit streets. We've just come through the famous Tolerancia neighborhood. And now we're in the Fabrica neighborhood. They're very dangerous areas. They're notorious in Acapulco because of their high levels of crime. In Juan's car, a policewoman armed with an automatic rifle is ready to counter any ambush. Yeah. 
Every vehicle out on the street at this time of night becomes a suspect, especially in this area. All-nighters are part and parcel of the job. The patrol makes it back to a safer area. The last Mexican tourists are finishing their evenings. It's time for a short break. Patrolling makes us hungry, especially because of the sleepless nights. We buy what's cheap and what we can afford so that we can eat. We often buy this dish, which is called pastor. Then we look for a quiet spot to eat, like here, where there isn't much traffic, for our own safety. If we're too focused on eating, we become less alert. That's why one of us goes over there as a lookout and another person over here. Then those that have eaten signal to us that they're done. That way the people eating are always protected. One eye over here, one over there. When we can give someone in need a taco, we do. Like any good person. At the Pattaya police station, the day crew picks up the reins. The officers head out to the scene of a reported robbery. Caught red-handed, the suspect did not resist. He's peacefully waiting the officer's arrival in the hopes that he'll be let off. Uh, yeah, but I said, I'm just sorry, I'm just sorry. I pay water, I go and suck I have what, what you buy? The thief, an Italian tourist, only stole a bottle of water, but the officers quickly noticed that his visa has expired. He's brought back to the station for more checks. This is his second offense. He may be deported. His name, like many other illegal immigrants, is on a blacklist. He won't be allowed to set foot on Thai soil for five years. Illegal immigrants are a significant issue for this country. They are believed to number over two million. But unlike the Italian, they are mainly workers from neighboring countries, often victims of harsh working conditions and abuses of power. Sex tourism causes many problems. There are many American, French, and Canadian citizens with expired visas who simply do not want to leave the country. The station's walls are covered with Interpol wanted notices. Photos of criminals wanted for human, drugs, and weapons trafficking, as well as child exploitation and even terrorism. On the other side of the city, a different type of operation is in progress. Special units of immigration agents have cordoned off a tower block where many immigrants live. The officers do not know what they will discover or what kind of welcome they'll receive. The teams are nervous. I've had to deal with immigrants living at the wrong address before. Their address didn't match the one on file with the immigration police. Colonel Sarania Fong is leading the operation. He's also acting as an interpreter. The police film the ID checks in case the situation escalates. 
It's mainly cases of expired visas. That's why people are being arrested. The operation leads to the arrest of a Thai citizen suspected of a banking scam. Additionally, several immigrants are apprehended and taken to the police station to be questioned about their identity. Some of them claim they don't have their passports. So we need to question them more closely. We're taking them to the immigration office at Jomchen Station. Following questioning, some will be able to re-enter their homes. Others will be deported after a stay in prison. It's shift changeover in Acapulco. Just before leaving the station, the next shift carries out a ritual. It's an exercise we do before going out into the streets. This procedure, repeated daily, is crucial in case of attack. We ensure our team is well prepared. Rapid response ensures officers have immediate cover on all sides. In the case of an attack, it could save lives. The unit is composed of young and seasoned officers ready to respond to any situation. The patrol officers have taken position and set up a roadblock in a very busy sector of Acapulco. It might be late, but the traffic is heavy. Officers stop suspicious-looking vehicles and search them for weapons. We're doing a CP. A CP is a checkpoint. We check vehicles. We also check passengers. We want to make sure that the drivers know who's traveling in their cars and that they're comfortable with them. We want to make sure that they feel safe. There have been many kidnappings recently in Acapulco. The police meticulously search trunks, looking for any incriminating evidence. The operation is running smoothly, but the team suddenly receives an order to leave the checkpoint right away and get to Los Cantinas, the area with the bars and brothels. There's been a shooting. The area is notorious for its bad reputation and could be a trap even for our heavily armed officers. Officers search a bar, looking for suspects and clues. This establishment, like most in the area, is a local cartel hangout. Here, rival gang settling scores have led to many deaths. Despite the searches and questions, no one is talking. It's Omerta, the code of silence. has been led by a military government since June 2014. The country is rattled by conflict between dissident factions in the north and the south, where guerrilla forces are active. In 2015, in Bangkok, the bloodiest attack in Thailand's modern history claimed 20 victims. In August 2016, over 10 bombs exploded, some simultaneously, all over the country. Pattaya has been spared until now, but the city is prepared for the worst. All threats are taken seriously. The 200,000 officers serving the Thai police force are permanently on alert. 
Officers responsible for public safety patrol non-stop. They're first and foremost looking for sensitive information. They have to constantly verify information to ensure public safety. I'm the head of the special branch in Pattaya. I take the lead if a situation escalates. When we get the smallest alert, the smallest clue, the police head straight out to investigate. We act as if we're dealing with members of ISIS and we suspect them of carrying out an attack on Bangkok. If the suspects are armed, the situation can become dangerous. It can involve physical confrontation. We have to launch a high-pressure attack on the suspects. That's the approach. But we have to keep our heads cool to succeed for damage control and to avoid putting the general public in danger. We're always on edge. That's when our strategic training comes into play, knowing the best approach. Three. Captain Plutprong and his team will soon compete against different special forces units from around the country. The team attentively waits its leader's advice so that they can excel in the competition. We're well prepared. We have been for a long time. We have to perfectly coordinate the two teams' actions because if one team caves, it'll all come crumbling down. The goal, neutralizing a group of terrorists preparing to attack. Our police exercises aim to find out if we have the guts to rescue hostages while keeping cool. The success of an operation like this depends on a speedy and efficient response. We can't avoid stress in this type of job, but we try to control it. We're still a bit apprehensive, but we can make it through thanks to our experience and training designed to help us solve problems. The exercise is evaluated by high-grade officers who closely follow its progress. The competition progresses under a sweltering heat, as is often the case in Thailand. The thermometer has reached 40 degrees Celsius. One of the officers participating in the exercise is overcome with the heat and has to be pulled out. Blood Prong's men are still in action. Hot or not, they've reached the final stage of the operation. Yeah. Captain Plot Prong's men are smiling, satisfied. They won. The elite troop celebrates its victory around a good meal. It has shown that it can face danger and tackle even the most dangerous situations. In Acapulco, Mexico, officers are once again on high alert. Another call from the station signals that there's been a murder in front of a bar owned by the local mob. We've just been told that there's been a killing. 
Most likely another score settled. One more in this city, where drug wars rage. Several people fired at the victim. When we arrived here at the scene, we confirmed that the information was correct, that a person had been killed by gunfire. The officers won't learn a lot about this crime. In this neighborhood where drug traffickers reign supreme, the code of silence is upheld once again. Our job is to face these kinds of situations. As an officer, you never get used to seeing that. The victim is lying face down. His pants have been pulled down, a sign of humiliation proving clearly that this is, once again, a killing link to cartel rivalries. Despite the authorities' efforts, the fight to create a safer atmosphere in Acapulco is far from over. A mass return of foreign tourists remains, for the time being, a long-term objective. You might even say a dream. We officers, we sometimes worry that we won't get to see our families again. I've seen colleagues die. It's traumatizing. For Juan Servin Casadero, each day is different, but the mission always remains the same. Whatever the danger, bringing order and safety back to Acapulco is his duty. Responsible for keeping the public safe doesn't mean that our family shouldn't matter. Acapulco, Pataya, two towns with tourism at the heart of their concerns. Two towns still standing thanks to the police officers.